CIM by the CIM's uh, Rock Engineering Society, uh, CGS's uh, Rock Mechanics Division, and uh, the uh, Canadian Rock Mechanics Association, Karma. Thanks for joining us uh, for this highly anticipated webinar on the role of rock engineering in a hydroelectric scheme from design to operation. Uh, please also stay tuned for our upcoming webinar series in 2024, which will be announced on our LinkedIn pages. Um, our speaker for today is uh, Dr. Mark, Dr. Marco uh, Quiron from Hydro-Quebec. Uh, Marco is a geological engineer with over 25 years of experience in uh, uh, rock engineering in the field of uh, uh, hydropower. He holds degrees in uh, ge geological engineering from Université Laval and a PhD in civil engineering from the Université de Sherbrooke. From 2000 to 2005, Marco worked at uh, Rock Test uh, company in uh, geotechnical uh, instrumentation before joining Hydro-Quebec as a geological <laughs> engineer, specialized in rock mechanics. And uh, Marco is involved in the uh, engineering of new hydroelectric schemes, as well as in several studies of the behavior of existing facilities, uh, presenting issues related to uh, rock masses. He's a member of the ISRM rock grouting uh, committee and uh, actively working in several uh, evaluation committees for NSEC. So without uh, further ado, uh, let's start. Uh, Marco, please uh, go ahead with your presentation. Well, thank you, uh, Cameron. Uh, and I, I thank the, the Karma uh, Association and CIM to invite me to, this, uh, to present this webinar. Uh, so yes, I will share with you uh, uh, some uh, some of the, the work I, I do here at Hydro-Quebec. So uh, in, in terms of objective, I think the, the, the main objective is to let you know uh, uh, more about uh, the contribution of rock engineering in, in, in design and construction uh, and maintenance uh, in the context of our, our company, Hydro-Quebec. So uh, I will uh, present some uh, typical, a lot of pictures you will see. I think it's a, a good Friday noon presentation because there's a lot of pictures of a, a surface and underground excavation. Uh, throughout the presentation, a few design aspects. Uh, I will cover that. Uh, some practices in, in excavation and support and uh, uh, some some insight on, on improvement we want to do in uh, maintenance of rock faces. Uh, with the uh, uh, development of, of a, uh, a framework, uh, research and development project uh, we have, and uh, on the possible avenues of risk analysis that we are uh, looking at uh, at the moment. So the outline, it's not uh, systematically uh, presented like that, but I will talk a few, few uh, words about Hydro-Quebec and our engineering group. Uh, the geology of the of, of the province of Quebec and uh, the the settings of our facilities, uh, example of underground and slope excavation and few design and design aspect on powerhouse, pressure tunnel, uh, spillway erosion and foundation, and the uh, uh, last word on risk analysis and climate change. Uh, Hydro Quebec is uh, is uh, owned by the uh, Quebec government. This this is the sole owner. And this is the largest electricity producer in Canada. Uh, I won't go through uh, all these numbers, but with uh, more than 600, uh, 600 dams and uh, generating 62 generating uh, station and a lot of kilometers of roads, uh, you can suspect that we have uh, uh, quite uh, a lot of uh, rock slopes and excavation uh, to manage. Um, uh, I, I want to acknowledge uh, the team uh, that uh, that work that works here at, uh, at Hydro Quebec, uh, our unit, which is called in, in French the Unité Expertise Intégrée uh, Géologie. Uh, we provide all the expertise and technical support for the complete life cycle of an infrastructure from the from the investigation early at early stage of, uh, of development up to the uh, maintenance of the uh, facilities. So 
all these people are are, are my colleagues and uh, this presentation uh, shows the, the 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 work we we, we do here at rock uh, sorry at the hydro Quebec um, so the geological setting to to start just to give you uh, to give you uh, a, an outline of uh, what in what type of rock we are working uh, so this is the uh, the province of Quebec and uh, we have uh, I would say three main uh, domain of uh, in terms of geology we have the uh, Appalachian uh, mountains the lowlands here and uh, up north the Greenville and Superior province um, this is mostly crystalline rock uh, here we have sedimentary rock uh, up to Quebec City and uh, I would say in Ontario here and uh, southern it's more uh, metamorphic uh, low-grade uh, schist and slates um, if we look at uh, the uh, the uh, dispersion of our uh, of our facilities, uh, you see that uh, since uh, 1920 up to uh, early 2000, we have uh, the, what we call the, the the first and second generation of our facilities, um, and uh, most uh, more recently, uh, the the last uh, development we had. Uh, is uh, uh, the project Romaine that you may uh, heard about. Uh, so La Romaine is on the Romaine River uh, here uh, in, down the low, um, the north shore, uh, lower north shore of the of Quebec. Um, so uh, uh, if we if we go to the geology map uh, together with the uh, facility map, you can uh, see quickly that we work mostly in crystalline rocks so that uh, gneisses granites and uh, this type of uh, of geology so mainly uh typical jointed rock mass uh with uh, orthogonal um, uh, joint sets and also uh, quebec was covered with uh ice sheet uh like many many years ago so uh, one of the uh, the type of joint we have to deal with is uh, related to this gr uh, glacial retreat. So uh, these uh, these uh, horizontal joint um, that comes from uh, the the um, the retreat of the uh, of the glaciers. So it's uh, these we see uh, the these type of this, this type of joint uh, in all our uh, our geology. Um, so the future it's uh, generally we work in uh, massive high strength rock uh, joint and foliation shear zone uh, water uh, and of course submitted to uh, freezing and thawing because in quebec uh, temperature as uh, as you may know uh, can reach uh, very low uh, very low uh, temperature so we have to deal sometime with uh, with ice uh, not only with uh, with rock falls so sometimes there is special treatment that we have to do with uh, with ice and this of course uh, can uh, impact the uh, evolution of the rock mass with these uh, freezing and thawing cycles uh, I, I won't talk much about investigation but i i just want you to know that we use uh, many type of investigation geophysics borehole with uh, with uh, water pressure tests, uh, borehole televiewer, drone surveys, of course, laboratory tests. This is the basic of our uh, of our data to make some uh, analysis and uh, and studies. Uh, so we can do a complete presentation on on, on investigation. So I will go uh, directly for uh, on, on rock slope with the uh, overview of uh, of uh, different type uh, different uh, facilities where there is uh, rock slopes uh because we have in depending on where we are some natural slope we have to deal with and and many uh, excavated slope um here it's a peribonka spillway the, the same picture as before uh, you see the spillway here you see uh, the dam and there is a large uh, excavation uh, here with uh, it's a bench excavation um and you can see the excavation of the spillway itself 
uh, this uh, this um, excavation may seem quite sharp, but uh, is a typical problem that we we, we had here is we lost uh, some of the extremities of the benches, and uh, of course this lead to uh, many uh, interrogation about uh, rock falls because there is a structure here, and during construction we have to be uh, works we have to work safe. So uh, we had to do some, uh, some of course, rock falls uh, study with uh, software. But uh, as you may see here in this picture, uh, we did also uh, real scale tests by, by uh, I don't have video here, but uh, a real scale test, real scale tests of uh, throwing some rocks down the slope uh, to see what, uh, what is the issue here. And I can confirm that it will uh, it will reach the the road here, and the bottom of the uh, of the canal. That that was done, of course, before uh, before construction. Uh, so this uh, the end of the story is that. And I will show you picture later. We have to put some uh, some uh, drape mesh to uh, protect this uh, the workers and uh, have a safe uh, uh, construction uh, procedure. Uh, Latsuk Dam, which is a, a dam with a, a, a large um, a high uh, slope here. There is an access to the dam. Uh, this was covered also with uh, treated and covered with uh, with mesh. And you can see the efficiency, the efficiency here of the of the mesh when there was uh, some uh, rock falls uh, that was guided uh, down the slope. Uh, Manitou Powerhouse, you can see the, 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 the special uh, configuration here with a small uh, axis just beside the, 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 this high slope. So this have uh, to be treated and also uh, scaling was quite difficult because we had to in some times uh, attach some rock blocks and, and put it down without um, letting, we cannot throw them down because of the presence of the, the powerhouse here. So it's uh, one of the case we have. Uh, water intake, you maybe don't see it, but here the structure you can see here is, uh, is, is the gate for the water intake, which is on the ground. There was some work here in this, uh, in this uh, sector uh, to, um, to rehabilitate this, uh, this uh, gate. And there was a lot of workers here, so we have to uh, to uh, manage the treatment of this uh, of this uh, slope uh, by putting mesh and putting also uh, um, uh, um, fences, catching fences. Um, a Bersimis dike, you can see here a, a dike with a, a very high natural slope. This is not an excavated slope, of course. Um, this uh, there there is the dike just uh, finishing uh, up to the down this slope. Um, there was some uh, there's not much people accessing this uh, this dike, but for inspection sometime and there was uh, some work here uh, to uh, make some uh, investigation. So we had to deal with this uh, this rock slope and uh, at the end of the presentation I will. I will introduce you uh, about uh, what we did on uh, risk analysis. Uh, surface powerhouse, which I will consider as a rock slope, but a vertical rock slope. Uh, this is uh, its main one, a uh, excavation is probably, uh, I would say maybe 70, 80 meter uh, um, excavation, uh, deep excavation. So um, uh, you can see here the, uh, a similar layout. It's not the same, uh, the same powerhouse, but it's a similar layout uh, surface excavation. Uh, we have here the uh, the the powerhouse uh, excavation. Well, where the powerhouse will uh, the powerhouse building will sit, and uh, a few words here. This is because I will I will talk about that later. Uh, the access tunnel uh, to make the uh, tunnel excavation. Uh, also, the edge tunnel here that brings the water from the reservoir to the powerhouse and the surge, uh, surge shaft. This is the uh, open air shaft in case of the if the powerhouse uh, stops working, the, the group stops working. There is a, the water comes backward and there is a, a backward pressure as in coup de bélier we, we say in French. So this is to take the pressure, the back pressure. Uh, 
from this uh, the uh, the group if the group uh, stops. Um, uh, yeah, this is to show you you have the excavation here, and just to show you that all this part here will be uh, the 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 building of the the powerhouse containing the groups will sit just uh, just in in front of this excavation. Uh, so you have the the water that uh, comes from the reservoir up, uh, go inside the the, the powerhouse. Uh, of course, we have uh, after to manage all these uh, these uh, rock slopes, uh, making them uh, safe and uh, during uh, during the uh, the operation. Uh, an example of a surge shaft. I put uh, the picture here of the uh, powerhouse in its section powerhouse excavation. Uh, the penstock here. Uh, I will talk about more uh, on the penstock later. The uh, address tunnel, and you can see here the excavation of the the surge shaft, which is a typical uh, vertical uh, shaft excavation. Uh, in terms of underground excavation, uh, the powerhouse, uh, the the address tunnel, penstocks, uh, access tunnel are the typical excavation we have. Uh, generally, this is not very, uh, very deep in the rock mass, uh, maybe uh, 160, 80, 100 or 150 meters depth in the rock mass. So we do not have really a really big problem with stresses uh, at these depth. It's more, uh, of course, gravity driv driven uh, stability issues. Uh, so uh, again, you have the the tailor race here, access tunnel, the powerhouse, uh, underground penstocks, and the address tunnel. An example of the access tunnel. This is Lagrange two uh, access tunnel to the uh, the powerhouse. Lagrange two is one of the the largest uh, uh, hydro uh, hydro power plant we have uh, in in in, uh, in Quebec. Uh, here we have uh, uh, an inclined penstock. So this one, sometimes they are uh, horizontal. This is uh, Edris tunnel and horizontal penstock. This one is near the power the powerhouse. So we have inclined penstocks. So uh, inclined excavation. Uh, typical underground excavation uh, of a powerhouse. This is the Peribanca powerhouse. You can see the the cavern here. Uh, with the holes that will receive the, the group later, and then the, the construction is starting to uh, to have the group uh, installed in the in the cavern. And uh, of course, uh, less rock is visible, but still uh, we have uh, in many cases to uh, maintain and uh, inspect uh, uh, the uh, the roof of the uh, of the powerhouse to ensure. Uh, that everything is uh, is safe in terms of geology. Uh, so, in terms of construction and and, and design, uh, Hydro Quebec, uh, when there is construction and works, the uh, we provide uh, the engineering firms with the uh, a, spe a specification framework, which we call the the Vicardre which is uh, give the uh, the firms responsible for the design uh, our our typical uh, our typical uh, requirements of course these specification and requirements uh, evolve uh, from project to another as we gain some experience uh, positive or, or negative so uh, we have a, a complete set of of, uh, of requirements and uh, Regarding uh, rock engineering, we have uh, requirements on excavation, rock support and, and surface protection, uh, drilling and grouting and instrumentation. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, during construction, uh, this is uh, Hydro-Quebec. Uh, Hydro-Quebec is a geological engineer and geologists are the uh, responsible for a blasting approval, the inspection uh, after excavation, uh, rock bolting, uh, the the, the, posit, the location of the rock bolts are the uh, are on under uh, the responsibility of uh, Hydro Quebec. So with these requirements and having uh, having um, geologists on site, uh, we think that this uh, will improve uh, the final quality of our rock excavation. Uh, 
to contribute to, to long-term safety and sustainability of the, the rock excavations. A uh, few examples that uh, in the requirements, for example, uh, to ensure the quality of the final rock faces, we, uh, we have uh, we provided with the guidance on uh, uh, the use of controlled blasting. Uh, for example, we have uh, buffer holes and line drilling to be uh, to be uh, to be put in place by the contractor uh, to uh, ensure that uh, that the the final phases of the uh, rock excavation are of uh, good quality. Uh, of course, there is also control on vibration and other uh, aspect of uh, and maximum loading of the holes and stuff like that. So this is a, an example. Uh, in terms of rock bolts, we use uh, typically 25 and 35 millimeter diameter uh, uh, rock bolt with the mechanical anchors, uh, typically four to eight meters in length. Uh, uh, the tension uh, af immediately after installation, they are tension at 66% of their working load. Uh, after that, they are grouted. Uh, of course, after uh, benching is is uh, is uh, finished, uh, they are uh, grouted for uh, corrosion protection. Uh, we use uh, generally a systematic patterns in the first level of excavation, the first part of the excavation. And after uh, the first bench, we use as requested uh, by the geologists, engineering geologists on site. Uh, of course, after a certain number of uh, of, insta uh, of installed rock bolt, we will do some uh, uh, proof tests. With uh, it's uh, typically a, a load test, which will reach a ninety percent of the uh, capacity of the uh, of the bolt, uh, and there's. To some requirements in terms of displacement and time of uh, the, we'll wait like five minutes uh, at the ninety percent of uh, uh, of the load. Uh, steel mesh steel mesh protection. This is uh, after excavation. We will we will put a flexible uh, mesh on the rock face. Uh, they are fixed with mechanical pins, uh, anchor pins, uh, with the spacing, uh, typical spacing, uh, uh, roughly one and a half meter spacing. Uh, the installation depends on the working zone. When there is, uh, th this is required on the rock faces, uh, more than five meter in height or ten meter. This is zone specific. Uh, it's generally more restrictive when there is a uh, concreting. Uh, near the uh, near the, the the faces because there is worker that are present, so uh, for uh, excavation of five meter in in height, we will put some uh, of these uh, of this uh, wire mesh. Uh, <clears throat> shotcrete is used also. We typically use uh, 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 shotcrete with uh, integrated wire mesh inside. Uh, this is when the rock mass is highly fractured. The rock bolt are not really efficient. We cannot tension uh, the rock bolt because the, the rock mass is too fractured. So uh, this is used for immediate protection. But however, <clears throat> in terms of long term, you can see here a picture that was not very successful with the long term uh, because uh, essentially probably water came came behind this uh, this uh, zone of the uh, of the um, uh, shot treat uh, protection so mainly for immediate protection can be very useful uh, we we did integrate uh, recently uh, fiber uh, fiber reinforced uh, shot treat uh, in some of the roaming projects so maybe this will be more uh, efficient in in, in terms of uh, long-term protection um high strength drape mesh this is the same slope i showed you before on peribanka where we uh, throw some uh, rock blocks down the slope uh the final solution was to uh because we had to work very uh fast because the construction the, cost, the construction has to go on um so we we put this drape uh, mesh over all uh, all over the slope to guide uh, the blocks uh, that could come from up uh, the, the the slope and uh, this had the advantage of with this drape mesh 
uh, in comparison to the pin mesh that uh, we don't have to go to uh, uh, bleed. I don't know to purge the tree, the, the uh, bleed the mesh. It's um, simpler because, in fact, we don't have to do this because the rock is stopped uh, just uh, in the slope uh, under that, uh, that mesh and is guided down. Uh, distant drape mesh, we use that for uh, the case uh, where there's heights uh, developing on the on the, the rock faces. Uh, so we just put some anchors, uh, I, uh, um, I strength uh, anchors to, uh, to uh, in fact, uh, deport, I would say, the mesh from the, from the, uh, the, the face and uh, get the ice uh, under that mesh. Uh, rockfall barriers and bond. Sometimes we deal with uh, natural rock slope that are not uh, that are not excavated or treated because it would be uh, impossible to treat uh, uh, so large uh, slopes. So uh, two things: uh, typical uh, barriers, uh, high, uh, high energy uh, fences, ring nets, and also we can use uh, some. You can see it here. It's uh, it's bond. There is a snow here, but this is bond. Uh, this is a, a kind of a small a small embankment uh, to uh, to uh, keep the the, the block uh, not going on the on the road surface uh post tension anchors we use that uh, for two things the first thing is for of course rock mass uh, stabilization you can see here uh, an excavation uh, of the uh, roman four powerhouse uh you can see the uh the the uh, shape the, the model we did for the the, the geology uh, this is the entrance here there is a, a rock block that developed here a wedge and you can maybe you can see here the small uh, dots here that are the uh, the post tension anchor uh, that we put when the uh, supports are very large wedge are uh, are required we use also uh, of course post tension anchor uh for uh, stabilization of dam uh so they are used in the uh, generally in the vertical manner uh to put some um, increase the uh, load uh, on the gravity dam when there is a stability issue this is an example here if you if you type uh, hydro press uh, december uh, 2022 you will see a a, a, a good uh, good review of this uh, of this project uh so we have uh, our, uh, the bonding zone is is uh, is one of our question okay you can see here a picture of the uh, of the anchor that will be put in the in this dam uh, yes, I, I wanted to mention that we we are actually looking at uh, all the uh, the capacity of the of the rock mass. The, the uh, I would say the um, the uh, what is the resistance of the rock mass of the contribution of the rock mass in 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 the, the uh, resistance of the anchor. So we started the research project with Sherbrooke University uh, about having more information on how is the behavior of the rock mass on the bonded uh, on the bonded zone uh, of the anchor um so we are we started that i think mostly last last year i would say um in terms of inspect uh, inspection and maintenance we uh as the um uh, we have to protect and guarantee. Ado Quebec has to to guarantee the, uh, the, uh, the the protection, the safety of the personnel that access our uh, our facilities. And as you as you saw before in the picture, there is a lot of rock slopes uh, near near uh, the uh, facilities. So uh, to guarantee uh, this the safety and also the the sustainability of our, our rock slope, we try to improve. Uh, our maintenance uh, of an inspection of uh, of these uh, of these slopes. So we we try to we are in the development of a, a kind of a maintenance framework. 
uh, to uh, inspect systematically uh, the, the the slope and also the caverns. So the idea is to give uh, a people um, uh, here that works in, in, in rock engineering uh, technical instruction for field inspection. This is a, an example for uh, for the mesh inspection. So we have a typical uh, guide to what you have to to look uh, in a mesh, for example, here, and give some uh, some uh, a kind of a note, uh, a, a rate uh, to different aspect of the mesh. Uh, of course, we. These technical instruction are detailed for all the uh, what we call the component of the uh, of the uh, of the rock surface. So the the rock bolt, the rock face, the pin mesh, the drape mesh, uh, all the protection. So this is a kind of a guideline for inspection uh, of the uh, and, and give a, a, a health rating, if I may uh, say that like this. Um, of course, for you will say inspection of rock bolt may be difficult because we only see the uh, the uh, the external head of the rock bolt. So we 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 try to see in some of our facilities uh, that dated from I would say in some 1790 uh, the years of in 90 and 70s. Uh, so we try to uh, to see what is the um, in, in, in what uh, what state are the the rock bolts? So we did some tensile uh, in situ tensile tests on on existing rock bolts. Uh, in fact, we we use also acoustic emission to see if there was some uh, some uh, some indication of of, of fracturing. Uh, so behavior was very good. We we cannot add the failure because I mean. I have to remember you that these rock bolts are uh, grouted, so we were not able to uh, to get out, uh, take out a bar uh, itself. So we had failure at the end of the rock bolt, uh, but uh, the behavior was was quite 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 good. Uh, no corrosion on failure surface. We did some uh, some uh, 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 material tests on it. Um, so that was very, uh, uh, very um, good result. Uh, of course, we were interested to, to um, investigate, can we do uh, something to uh, inspect the, the bolt without, uh, without uh, destroying it? So we did some tests at the University of Sherbrooke trying to have a, a method to detect the uh, defect in a rock bolt. Uh, this was quite promising at the scale of the laboratory and even at a scale, uh, I would say medium scale, which is a control. But uh, however, in terms of putting that in place on site, it's uh, we're not there yet, I would say. Uh, but uh, so at this time, there's no systematic use of uh, non-destructive testing, but we, we, we were um, interested in see what could have, what we could do with that. And you can see here a bar that was uh, artificially corroded in laboratory. And with the pulse echo technique, we can detect the defect uh, due to corrosion. Uh, so this worked very well in, in laboratory and even at a, a scale, as I mentioned, a larger scale, but in terms of putting it in practice on site, it's, uh, it's not there yet. Uh, so, uh, another subject is an uh, online pressure tunnel, which is, uh, which is a, a topic that is uh, um, uh, typical in our uh, design of our uh, facilities. So, uh, just a few uh, explanations. The, the address tunnel is uh, the tunnel that takes the water from the reservoir up to uh, the powerhouse. So in that case here, it's uh, like a 10 kilometer uh, tunnel uh, uh, in rock because this tunnel is not uh, lined with concrete uh, or shotcrete. So it's the rock uh, itself. The, the rock is in direct contact with, uh, with the water. Uh, the 
issue here is when you have a, a large water head, of course, there is at some point where the fracture in, in the rock, the, the, the water can enter the fracture in the rock and uh, this will uh, create the fracture to open because the pressure is, is, is too high. And uh, so this pressure could uh, lead to uncontrolled hydrojacking of the fractures. So uh, in terms of design, in preliminary design, we just compare the uh, weight of the rock uh, cover uh, in comparison with the water pressure in the tunnel. And in detailed design, we used uh, hydrojacking tests on site. Uh, the hydrojacking test is just putting in boreholes. We, we drill boreholes. I will show you a picture after uh, to inject water uh, under pressure to, to try to define at what pressure uh, the, the fracture will start to open. Uh, of course, because what we don't want is this uncontrolled opening of a fracture uh, that will result in water loss and uh, eventually potential instabilities. So this is a, a, an example of the Roman tree uh, pressure tunnel, which you have the reservoir here. Uh, you have the tunnel uh, that goes up to the powerhouse. Uh, and here in red, this is the, the penstock. Uh, so you can imagine that the pressure uh, increase uh, from the reservoir. There's an increase in pressure up to the, the powerhouse. And this is the point where we have to, to, to deal with uh, in terms of, uh, of high pressure, uh, high water pressure. So the idea is to, as the rock mass may not be able to take the pressure, we have to put uh, protection, which is a steel liner. So you have the tunnel. This is a section of the tunnel. And uh, you have to put some... Uh, uh, some lining here to to take this uh, this high level pressure. Uh, of course, this lining is is costly, uh, so we have to define at what point we can stop it. And to define that point is where we will uh, we will do some uh, boreholes before excavation. Of course, this is the this is the trace of the tunnel, uh, and this is borehole that are uh, drilled before uh, before excavation, of course. So what we do with this borehole, first we are doing some uh, borehole televiewer to, uh, to uh, try to find where is their uh, joints, uh, open joints. And then uh, when we locate it in a, in a drill hole, these joints, we will do some uh, hydro jacking test. All this black dot you see in these uh, drill hole are uh, hydrojacking tests. Uh, these tests are uh, essentially uh, putting uh, two packers in the drill hole at different level, just uh, uh, over one of these open joint and put some uh, water uh, under pressure to, uh, to try to open uh, the joint and see at what pressure this joint will open. Uh, in Roman tree, there was like 82 uh, hydro jacking tests when eight uh, bore all along all the uh, the future tunnel. You see here the the field set up with the water tank and the um, the packers. Uh, you don't see it, but it's in the in the borehole here. Uh, the analysis after is one of the the possibility to to analyze the result is to have a a, a graph giving the the flow. Uh, uh, related to pressure and uh, at some point where there is opening of the fracture you can see a, a kind of a, of a break in, in the in the curve so this is the way we will one of the way we will graphically analyze uh, at what pressure the uh, the, the joint uh, opened uh, there is some example of different project uh, where we did some uh, recent project that we where we did some hydro jacking tests, you can see the one of the result of the uh, flow and uh, flow and pressure curve, and you can see the values are quite similar in this uh, type of crest, uh, crystalline rock that we we have. Uh, 
So this is a, there is a good discussion when we do uh, this test uh, about uh, the interpretation of the, of the result. Uh, other, another topic, online uh, spillway uh, erosion potential. So uh, this is one of the issues we, ha we have to deal with in, in, in new, in new uh, development and also in existing development. Uh, so this is the, what is the uh, erosion potential is that we put the, the, the hydraulic power, you can see a, a, here a spillway that uh, you have a, a, a water uh, spill here uh, that goes on the, on the rock mass. So we have to compare the energy of this water with the quality or resistance of the rock mass. Um, so uh, typically there is some cases here uh, at Hydro-Quebec that you, you, you see the, the uh, spillway here. After uh, a spill, when there is a, a long, uh, long duration and high energy spill, there is sometimes rock that, uh, that are... Uh, uh, th that are removed from from the the at the, the base of the structure. Uh, the idea is to uh, avoid that this uh, this erosion reaches the base of the uh, structure and uh, and it, it damage the structure. So uh, this is uh, uh, one of the the issue we have uh, in terms of mechanism of rock scour. Uh, there is a method to uh, to uh, determine the uh, potential of, of, of uh, erosion. Uh, one of the uh, well-known method is the one developed by uh, by Annandale. Uh, so you can see here the mechanism of uh, of this lodgement of rock. So what happens is when you have a flow on the uh, on the spillway uh, rock. Um, there is a, a transient pressure that uh, goes in the joints and with the, uh, the pulses inside the joint, there is a removal, dislodgement of the block. And this lead to, uh, to uh, damage of the, of the, of the rock, uh, the rock uh, the, the spillway uh, channel. And with the evolution, this could... Uh, uh, regress up to uh, progress, I would say, up to the structure. That's the, what we don't want. Uh, the Annandale method relates, in fact, an index of erodibility uh, related to the power of, uh, of the flow uh, exiting the spillway. Uh, this part is more uh, the part of my colleague uh, specialized in hydraulic engineering. Uh, our, our job here is more on the definition of the uh, erodibility index. Uh, in terms of uh, assessment of erodibility, a method like this is giving you, uh, uh, an, I would say, a score or no score. So uh, if you are in uh, low energy and high strength rock, I would say uh, high strength rock mass, you will have no score. Uh, and if you have uh, high energy, low uh, low uh, quality mass, you will have score. But it's uh, it's not really defined on the, um, the there's no precise definition on the uh, the moderate, uh, high, or uh, low uh, score potential. Uh, this method is based, in fact, on on an erodibility index that was developed by Kirsten, which originates. Uh, from a uh, rippability index. Um, so uh, you, you recognize here the Barton Q index. Uh, this was developed using that, but uh, adding uh, a relative block structure uh, factor, which is related to the, uh, the flow or ripping direction or the flow direction and the shape of the, of the blocks uh, and also the uh, orientation of the of the of the the joints, so uh, this is the way to to calculate the erodibility index. Uh, these methods uh, evolve with with time. There is the Annandale one, which is a threshold line, uh, Van Scalquick with erosion domain from low to high erosion potential, and there is more recently uh, a development by Pels 
who uh, did some more uh, definition on erosion uh, domain. But uh, these, um, these methods uh, are developed using uh, a real case, in situ case, but in different type of rocks. Uh, so we were interested for a crystalline rock to, uh, to try to, uh, to better understand the erodibility index. So we, uh, we work with the uh, Université du Québec at Chicoutimi in developing a, a, sm a, a large scale uh, laboratory uh, a spillway uh, that is, uh, that is um, uh, kind of a copy a scale model of the Roman IV uh, spillway and to make some different study uh, on, uh, on, on different aspect of rock mass. So you see here this, this, this model spillway with some uh, 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 synthetic, uh, I would say, uh, rock mass with uh, different uh, joint opening and we do some simulation and do some, uh, there is many students working on that. Uh, you can go to, again, Hydro Price, uh, typing that on the website, you will see a good uh, review of that uh, with a, a, even a, a small video of the operation of this, uh, of this uh, scale model. So this is used to uh, better define some parameter related to crystalline rock mass. So there is a, a lot of study uh, on, on, with this uh, simulator. Uh, in terms of protection, there's not much to do when we see that there is a potential of erosion. Uh, you have two spillway here, and you can see that there is a concrete slab protection, which is a kind of, uh, of sacrificial protection to avoid uh, a direct erosion uh, under the, uh, the, structure, uh, the, the, the structure itself. A few words about Dam Foundation, which is one of the... Uh, important topics in our our, uh, our job uh, you have two foundation here that is uh, the I I focus on 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 concrete dam but there is also uh, we can discuss also uh, embankment dams so this is uh, uh, Daniel Johnson dam which is one of the uh, largest uh, buttress dam uh, in, in in I would say North America and uh, the Lagrande uh, Dam, you can see the rock mass under the uh, under the uh, the concrete dam. So the idea that uh, we have to um, uh, to what we have to manage is generally two things: uh, it's uh, uh, water pressure uh, under the the uplift pressure. So we don't want that the pressure uh, uh, um, come. Uh, under the uh, under the structure, so uh, for example, the Daniel Johnson on Manic Five Dam, we have the arch, the base of the arch. In fact, uh, I should precise here that uh, this dam is a, a arch dam, multiple arch dam. So this is the arch here. So in this picture, we see the base of the arch, and in the upstream, we have this grouted this grout curtain that is made. And in term of, uh, of uh, second uh, defense, we have some uh, drain holes. So if the water, what we don't want is that the water goes directly under the arch and the buttresses mainly, and also uh, under inside the, the rock mass here uh, to avoid any uh, uh, overpressure, uplift pressure. So there is the, the grout curtain and this, the second protection is a drain, is a, a water drain that goes inside the, a tunnel that is below the below the dam in the rock mass. So you can see this uh, this uh, tunnel uh, here, a picture of it. And you can see here a piezometer that are uh, placed uh, just under the foundation uh, of the of the dam. So this is the the the, the thing that we can monitor. In terms of drainage system, all the water is channeled in a, a lower point in the in the tunnel, and this is a channel in weir to uh, to uh, determine the uh, flow rate. So the evolution of this flow uh, flow rate can uh, help us to uh, to detect any uh, any behavior uh, specific behavior or changes in the behavior of the dam. Uh, of course, these uh, these uh, drainage all with time uh, 
sometimes uh, started to clog. So we have to uh, to do some maintenance with uh, high pressure uh, a water jet to uh, to remove all these uh, uh, calcite or different deposit that could clog the uh, the drainage system. Uh, concrete rock and surface is uh, uh, also a large topic because we have to do uh, stability uh, analysis of our existing facilities uh, when they are uh, uh, evaluated for safety. Uh, so we do a lot of uh, rock concrete uh, and uh, rock concrete shear uh, strength tests. Uh, we did a pilot test to uh, study the effect of uh, of a larger scale test. This is a uh, a pilot test uh, that we did with uh, Sherbrooke University. Um, so you see a concrete block here, which is instrumented in uh, in many ways. Uh, uh, you see the uh, the uh, normal load, and here this is the uh, the uh, lateral load uh, to do to uh, produce a displacement and see the um, the shear uh, the, the determine the the shear uh, parameter. Uh, of course. We work here at a small scale, so a lot of discussion about the effect of this small scale the, uh, between the dam uh, complete foundation. So this is uh, one of an important topic that we uh, we uh, discuss here. Uh, possible avenues uh, that we look uh, a lot is risk analysis, uh, because when you see a large uh, natural slope difficult to uh, to have a, a treatment so um, uh, install protection in such large uh, 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 slopes can be uh, put more at risk than the hazard itself so uh, uh, we work uh, in the last year in having our and kind of an evaluation of what we could do with risk analysis evaluation. So uh, we had a systematic uh, approach of, uh, uh, of risk analysis. And as we do not have uh, uh, standards about, uh, about uh, acceptable risk, we, we see if uh, comparison with societal risk can be uh, uh, an avenue to go because in in many cases we when we evaluate the uh, uh, the uh, the risk uh, it's difficult to see what is acceptable or not acceptable so we try that because in a case of a large slope like uh, we had at Bersimis uh, there was work uh, to do at the bottom. Uh, just uh, uh, downstream the dam near the the, the uh, large rock slope uh, there's a low uh, probability of occurrence of of hazard uh, the worker are not there really um, in the, uh, on a small extent uh, a small duration uh, of time and on a very small uh, portion of the base of the at the base of the slope so when we look when we put all these uh, these uh, these element in in, in uh, together uh, we may uh, arrive to something very unlikely to happen uh, but of course very severe uh, consequences but still in the low or moderate uh, uh, risk and when we are at the low and moderate risk this is where we 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 arrive in a zone that this is maybe tolerable but uh, maybe we have to do something, um, something reasonable to protect uh, the the people. So we tried that on on this uh, work we had to do down the slope. Uh, it's a large study that was made by one of my colleagues, uh, evaluating the number of the block at the base of the talus, the volume of accumulation, the duration of accumulation. Uh, the dimension distribution of the block, uh, fragmentation factor, uh, all these, uh, all these parameter were used to calculate uh, probabilities of uh, of having a block reaching uh, the workers here, uh, using a at risk software to do that. 
because it allows you to uh, to make some and uh, uh, in, in, introduce uncertainties of on your different parameters. So the reasonable protection you see it here, what like two big trucks that uh, protect us for us. Uh, it, it was determined that only small block can go down here. So this is the reasonable uh, protection uh, that was used. Uh, last word on climate change. Uh, during summer uh, 2023, a forest fire uh, came on uh, near one of our facilities. Uh, so you can see here the, uh, the, um, the final picture of be, uh, after the forest fire, all the vegetation is essentially removed. Uh, so this lead to an increase of rockfall events reaching the road that goes uh, uh, up to our dam. This is the, the road that goes to the dam. Uh, so this is um, this is a, a thing that we we worked that before before Christmas. It was a, a big issue. So uh, I can. This is one of the the thing that climate change in in terms of uh, impacting uh, our our. Uh, our field could um, uh, could happen. So forest fire here was uh, was a big issue because you don't have any more vegetation to reduce the uh, the uh, the path uh, the block reaching the road. You have uh, more water coming in the fractures. So uh, yeah, this is one of the I think future problems that we will have to to face. Uh, in conclusion, I think. Uh, Rock engineering and hydroelectric uh, scheme is uh, is uh, is important. In, uh, so we we work on site investigation, underground surface uh, excavation, uh, spillway rock erosion, pressure tunnel dam foundation. Uh, so um, I think uh, uh, plenty of job in in our field with uh, with hydropower. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Few reference here. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Marco, for this uh, very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, I think we have time for a couple of questions. If uh, anyone has question, please go to the uh, reaction button and uh, raise your hand, and uh, then you can uh, unmute yourself and ask your question. There are a few questions in the chat, I think. Where erodibility risk of growth, curtains also study? Whether the, the erodibility risk of growth, uh, curtains also studied, uh, Marco, that there is a question on the chat. Okay, um, I'm, I don't see the question. Can you uh, just repeat it or? Whether the erodibility risk of growth, curtains also studied? Ah, the erodibility of gold curtain. Okay. Uh, yes and no. Not really. We did. Uh, uh, I can put. Uh, I saw that someone asked for the reference. We tried something, but it's it's not an easy task. Uh, I, I I will try to re uh, re share my screen. Um, we did a study uh, with Sherbrooke University on aging of grout, but it's really difficult to study the, uh, it's not really the erosion, but more the, uh, the aging process with water going to, uh, that could go through the grout curtain. We have a study here. Um, okay, let me see. Uh, if you see my screen, there is this study by Ner Neron, which is aging of cement grouted joint by water and acidic flow. Uh, we tried something. Uh, it's not easy to, to study because if you want to um, damage a grout, uh, grouted joint, for example, with water, it will take a long time to do that. So we tried this with acidic flows, but uh, of course it's not the reality. So we tried something, but it's not very conclusive at this time. Any other questions for, for Marco? Uh, 
and the list of references is is here i think it's been given yeah oh sorry i can put it that back if you want There's a question again. It says, did you see any post-glacial faults? Uh, post-glacial faults. Uh, I'm, not sure I'm, uh, I'm not sure I understand well the question. Uh, yeah. I know that when we do a new uh, development, of course, generally we are in... Uh, you know, you, you know that dams sometimes uh, sits on, on on in in a river, and there is we are on a fault or nearby a fault. Uh, sometimes these uh, uh, these uh, these these uh, sites are are there is fault there. Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question, but uh, maybe we uh, work we work generally in fault zone. David, can you please un unmute yourself and, and ask your question? Yeah, thank you. Um, my question is, after excavation, uh, how long are you supposed to start doing your support or your grafting? Uh, the rock bolting? Yeah. The rock bolting is generally uh, the, the the sequence is that there is uh, the uh, the excavation and um, uh, there is the um, scaling with uh, the large uh, uh, mechanical scaling with uh, a shovel uh, and then there is uh, the workers goes with uh, um, uh, I don't know how to say. Uh, they they go up and they they do the uh, manual scaling from up to down, and immediately the geologist goes for uh, uh, marking and marking the rock bolt and uh, make the installation. So the rock bolting is made immediately after excavation. I would say this like that uh, before uh, the the worker can go uh, work um, below the excavated slope or bench i would say yeah yeah sorry the question i'm saying is like after excavation uh mm -hmm. how long you have to give the self uh support before you can uh get, go into and do your grafting or your reinforcement the grouting of the reinforcement yes after excavation yeah. Immediately you, you finish excavation your rock. Uh, yeah. there's you have to give the a time frame for the rock to settle before you can support to get your maximum support. But I want to know how long it how it takes before you you start to do your support. Well, I honestly I, I maybe um, I, I'm not sure I understand the question, but the support is made immediately after excavation because. We don't have, it's not like in deep mining where there is uh, uh, the, the rock mass that is deforming. Uh, here we, we deal with gravity-driven problems. So immediately we, we, do, we do not wait to put the, the support because what we don't want when we, we cannot wait because the second bench of blasting if there is some open joint, there will be, uh, of course, a, a rock slide. So the support is, is, is put immediately after excavation. We don't wait any settlement. And then about the grouting of the rock bolts, we can, we can uh, wait because we don't want to uh, damage the grout with blasting and also uh, uh, so yeah, we wait that the, there is some less, uh, I would say, um, um, work around the the, the supported uh, uh, bench. There was another so, yeah. question. Thank you. Uh, 
there is another question regarding uh, have you ever installed the uh, permanent double corrosion bolts on your sites no we didn't uh, we didn't try that uh, yeah we did some tests about protecting what we what we installed is a galvanized uh, rock bolt we we tried that yeah but not double uh, the anchors are uh, however, the post-tension anchors are double protection anchors. Uh, what do you use for grouted anchor capacity in terms of kilonewton per meter? If, if you have uh, a number in... in... Uh, you, you say for... Uh, what's the question? Grout, what do you uh... use for grouted anchor capacity? Uh... But it depends. Uh, it depends on what we have to support. I'm not sure I understand well, but it uh, depends on the support of uh, uh, of the uh, of the, the the wedge or the or, or the dam. What the normal pressure we have to normal force we have to uh, to increase. If it's a dam, if it's a wedge, it depends on. The... Indeed. Have you considered uh, GBR geotechnical baseline reports for? Oh yes. Yes, yes. Roman was uh, was completely done with GBR. Okay. And does Hydro Quebec manage uh, manage the uh, Chaudier Falls uh, powerhouse? If so, is there any background information on the investigation carried out with the design and any testing carried out on the rock mass in this area? Oh, sorry. Uh, what what uh, facilities? Chaudier Falls uh, powerhouse. Our oh, Chaudier Falls. No, it's not one of our. Uh, uh, in fact, Chaudier Falls uh, is a uh, ring. If it's okay, if it's the ring dam, it's not. Uh, it was a property of Hydro Quebec at one time, but not anymore. Okay. There is another one as uh, are you using any geophysical methods like ESP 303 for tunnel seismic prediction systems as part of the uh, as part of forward probing during tunneling? Uh, no, not to my knowledge, because our tunneling generally are quite simple drill and blast tunneling, uh, no stresses. So um yeah no specific and uh, no pilot holes uh it's solely based on the investigation we do before uh, the other question is are you monitoring local seism seismicity or micro seismics uh not sure i difficult to answer i know that my colleague in structural engineering they are doing uh, ambient vibration uh, monitoring for uh, stability analysis. Uh, in terms of rock engineering, we we do not uh, do micro seismic uh, monitoring. No, no. And there is another question asking for uh, inclined penstocks. Is there a go no go uh, criterion for them? Is there a max uh, maximum inclination or rock types that that would not be suitable? Um, rock type, I have difficulty to to answer because we are always in quite good rock mass, crystalline rock mass. And generally, uh, we do the investigation because when we do the investigation and also the uh, preliminary studies, we know that we are generally in a good rock mass unless there is a a huge fault that we we could not see, but it's it doesn't never happen really for pen stocks. Uh, in terms of inclination, uh, I would say it's more the hydraulics engineer that give us the uh, input for that. Uh, but uh, we did. I, I know that we did some excavation with Alimac uh, procedure. Uh, and also with long holes, there is different type of procedure to uh, to go uh, for excavation. But I didn't, uh, to my knowledge, I didn't have any issues with that. 
uh, what are the principal aspects considered in the GBR for this type of projects? Uh, and uh, what are your recommendations during the DG, uh, GBR uh, development process? Oh, this is a, a large question. Uh, we covered, uh, I would say, uh, many, many aspects. Uh, joint orientation with some, uh, you know, GBR, it's with a certain uh, interpretation you do. You do. Uh, rock joints, uh, compressive strength traction type of rock. Uh, we, we did, uh, there is a lot, a lot to cover. Uh, it's difficult for me to, to give you all the, uh, the list, but it's, uh, uh, yeah, it, it, the recommendation, if, if you never, in our case, when we started that, we were, uh, for the first one, we had an expert with us that already uh, is already familiar with GBR. Uh, if I have a recommendation for you is to, to have uh, someone with you that have the experience of GBR uh, before, at least for the first one. There is another question on GBR. Based on your experience with using a GBR for Romain, will you be uh, implementing GBRs for future projects? Uh, good question. I, 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 I would say yes, but you know, sometimes this is, I would say not the technical people decide the way to manage, uh, to manage the project. It's, to the project manager uh, so it depends on how you want to treat uh how you want to deal with the contractors and your project so it, it won't be my recommendation it won't be uh from my the recommendation come from from us i would say uh have you encountered squeezing and fault zone uh, ground condition during tunneling and could you please share some info on uh, support provided uh, in this i guess in this kind of ground condition uh squeezing uh, as i mentioned stresses are not a big issue uh so squeezing condition i i never uh, i never personally saw that uh, of course, there is some time there is a uh, bad section of, of, of uh, less quality section of rock, but uh, uh, generally uh, it's what, what could happen is more rock bolt, uh, uh, you know, a less spaced rock bolt and uh, shot creep in some section that I think this is the worst uh, we can expect in our type of rock mass. And was the hydrofracturing test used to estimate the in-situ stresses as well? Or what kind of result was obtained in that case if, if you have done hydrofracturing for in-situ stress estimation? No, that, that, it, essentially we are doing hydrojacking tests less. If we do hydrofracturing is because we don't have uh, any fracture. So we want to create a fracture. But generally, we do hydro jacking tests, so we have to we, we deal with existing fracture. So, and honestly, the determination of the uh, uh, in the last uh, development we had the determination of of the uh, of the stresses is was not a, a, a question at at this depth. Okay, I think we can stop here. Thank you very much, uh, Marco, for this excellent presentation. Uh, thank you. Thank you all the uh, participants. Uh, and uh, let's make this uh, webinar series uh, a truly enriching experience for everyone involved. Thank you, and we'll see you soon again. Thank you. Bye.